well, we're going to have to toss it to Femi and get his reaction. So, well, Femi, we, we, we heard them talk about uh, some uh, stats about the cost market list which uh, uh, DG got in terms of the performance of the economy. I suggest, uh, that perhaps was just reacting to what you have said, that the economy had improved. But if we rely on those figures that he's real down, do you then think that uh, the economy is still on the rise? Well, I, I, I didn't quite hear the statistics he reeled out because there was some connection failure at that point. But uh, he is not more authoritative than the National Bureau of Statistics. Quarterly, the National Bureau of Statistics comes out with facts and figures on the economy. That is the one we believe. That is the one we run with. So whatever he has said, you need to compare it with what has come from NBS. And NBS is a credible body, is a neutral body. When the economy went into recession, it told us. And when it came out, it told us. And every quarter, it releases its figures. So whatever figures, voodoo figures they may be, just compare it with what the NBS has released. Okay, so let me look at then what the NBS has released. Uh, the MBS uh, was published in The Guardian, for instance, on the 10th of March 2017, where they quoted the MBS and they say 3.7 million Nigerians have lost their jobs in 2016. That's a stats from the MBS. And then in December 2017, it was quoted in Punch. They say 4 million Nigerians have lost their job this year, again, ascribed to the MBS. So, uh, so how do you react to all of those then? Those, those were 2017 figures. How I wish you had March 2018 figures. But then you know that as of 2015, we had about just 5.6 million rice farmers in Nigeria. Today, we have over 12 million rice farmers. Do you see that there's over 6 million jobs created in agri, in just one phase of agri, rice, not to talk of all the others. So at times when these figures come, they just talk about white collar jobs. And that is not the only kind of jobs you have. Mr. Additional, because uh, I'm really confused about when you refer to that particular staple food, rice, that the government has largely said that 90% of the importation of rice is stopped and replaced with local production. But the price of the rice still remains constant as pre-reforms uh, that you have put in place. How do you justify that? No, I, would, I wouldn't call it constant. There was a time rice sold for 20,000 naira per bag. Today it's around 13,000 for the locally grown. So I wouldn't agree with you that that price is constant. No, because what I mean by that is because the price of the imported rice and the local rice is still the same. Well, no, there, there's no imported rice. There's smuggled rice. There's smuggled rice because as we are now, rice should not come in through the land borders. But they are being smuggled in, and that is meant to injure local production. So when we use official figures, we shouldn't be using smuggled rice. We should use locally grown rice, which what? stands at about 13,000 naira per 50 kg bag. Mr. Adesino, you know, people will, will want to pick, pick a bone with you on that, and that bone will be that under your watch, and you still have rice being smuggled? Of course. No, no country has been able to secure its borders. No country. You can see what President Trump is doing with Mexico now, wanting to build a wall. And before the wall is built, he said he's going to put troops around that border. No country in the world has been able to effectively secure its borders. Do you think that when you come to the point where uh, the primaries sets in, do you think that Mr. President has got bigger challenges that will possibly emerge at the primaries to run for president? That, that, that will be in line with democracy. That, dem, dem, that there is no democracy of one man. If it is one man, it's no longer democracy. Democracy thrives on multiplicity. So the All Progressive Congress is going to allow all other contending forces to express themselves.